In this problem, we are asked to, to determine the shear and moment as a function of x, and then draw the shear and moment diagram. So here we are, we are given a distributed load or a distributed force. And as you can see, this one looks like a triangle at a value or, or the intensity of six kilonewton per meter. And this distributed load is distributed along the three meter of the of the given beam. And this beam we it starts from zero, ends at three, and at three we have at a a fixed support. So now what we want to do is we want to find the support reactions. This is the first step that you always start with. Find out the support reaction before you proceed to find out the uh, internal shear force and the internal net moment as a function of x. So in here, as, as you can see, we have a fixed support. And a fixed support uh, restricts the movement in the vertical direction. That's why we're going to have a value of a sub y. And also restrict the movement in the x direction. That's why we're going to have an a sub x y, a sub x value. And it also restricts the movement in the uh, rotation or moment. So that's why we, so here we assume that our moment is clockwise. And remember, this beam starts from zero. So as a convention, we all, uh, we go all the way to the left hand side and we uh, make that left hand side uh, as our origin as zero meter. So here we want to find that uh, we want to convert from distributed load to concentrated load. To do that, we will simply take the area of this shape, which is a triangle. So the height of this triangle is six and the base of this triangle is three. And that's what we have in here. One half times base, three meter times six kilonewton per meter. And and we have now the value of the concentrated load. Now the question is, where are we going to place this concentrated load with respect to the zero meter location? So in here you can go to any uh, area uh, and centroid table or area uh, area moment of inertia table. And here I I located a figure shape that is similar to what I have in here. A right triangle and this dot in here and the letter C the C the letter C stand for centroid and this centroid uh, have an X and Y coordinate in here we want to place this vertical force at our beam and so here we're interested in the X direction so we want to find the so we will use this expression to find where we're going to place our concentrated load. So in here, it will be two third times the base, which is three meter. And, and pay attention here. The distributed load run from zero all the way to three. If you were given a problem where a distributed load only runs from zero to one and a half meter, then the base will be one and a half for that triangle, not three meter. But in this case, our distributed load run all the way from zero to three along, along the whole beam. So that's what we have in here. So this three will cancel with this three and that will give us two meter. So we will go two meter from zero and that's where we're gonna place our concentrated load of the value nine kilonewton, which is the area of this triangle. And from moving on from now, I will represent the beam with this dashed line, this dashed yellow line, which which is which which is also uh, run through the center of the beam along the beam. So we can consider this also the axis of the beam, the central axis of the beam. And as a reminder, these vertical forces are called transverse loads because they act. Uh, at a, uh, because they act perpendicular at a 90 degree angle 
of the central axis of the beam. These transverse loads generate uh, internal shear forces. These internal shear forces, they act parallel to the cross-sectional area cut, as you can see in here, and they are oriented or they are oriented vertically. So that will generate a net internal shear force. Now the external applied moment, like the moment because of the fixed beam, or if we are given uh, a, a certain moment at a certain location of the beam, these external moments will cause internal normal forces. Normal, for normal forces act perpendicular to the cross-section cut as shown in here. So what will happen is from, from half of the beam all the way to the top, as you can see, uh, we have normal forces pushing on the beam. So these are generating compressive forces. From the middle of the beam all the way down, as you can see, the normal force is pulling. So that will cause um, tension in the beam. So because, because these forces will cancel each other, they will generate an internal net moment. So that is our, our final goal is to find the internal shear force of the beam as a function of x and the internal net moment as a function of x. And here we will use uh, the static equilibrium equation to help us find the reaction forces and the internal shear force as a function of x and the internal net moment as a function of x. So here we were, so here we have our free body diagram for the uh, beam with the, you know, with the forces that we need to find. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sum the forces in the vertical direction equal to zero. And that will be A sub Y going up positive and minus 9K, 9 kilonewton going down. So here we can solve for A sub Y and that will be uh, 9 kilonewton. And here we can erase the A sub Y and replace it with 9 kilonewton. Next, we want to find the moment. Then before we do that, uh, as you can see here, we have the zero kilonewton uh, in the vertical direction because that's the only force we have. Now we're going to sum the moment at A uh, equal to zero. And remember, as a convention, clockwise, counterclockwise is positive. And here I like to place a circle at the center of A, where we're taking the moment. And remember, a moment is a force times the perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation. And that distance from 2 to 3, the difference is 1 meter. And if we took this 9 kilonewton force vector and apply it at the end of this circle, that will cause the circle to go counterclockwise positive. So that will give you a positive moment. And that's what we're going to have in here, 9 times 1 meter positive moment, plus we assume that the moment at A is positive, equal to 0. So now we can solve for the moment at A. The moment at A will be minus 9 kilonewton times meter. All right, so what does this MA? We will replace it with 9 kilonewton times meter. But what does the minus mean? The minus means that our initial assumption that our moment uh, is counterclockwise is wrong. So that so we will delete this and we will make it clockwise, the correct direction. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, find the internal shear and internal net moment due to the external loads that, that we found. So we, we were able to find the external loads, uh, which is 9 kilonewton, and external moments at 9 kilonewton times meter. And we have this distributed load in here of an intensity of 6 kilonewton per meter. 
and this beam that runs from and this distributed load runs from zero all the way to three so what we're going to do is we will make a, a cut in here and we will draw this cut on the right hand side so now this cut starts from zero all the way to x an arbitrary length and at that arbitrary length we will make our cut at the cut our goal is to find the internal net shear force as a function of x and the internal net moment as a function of x so what we want to do in here is we want to sum the forces in the vertical direction to zero and we want to sum the moments at the cut x equal to zero now we want to convert this distributed load that we have in here to a concentrated load so we can able to uh, find the internal shear force so this right here we call it the intensity of distributed load and we give it a letter w in here and so so w right here represent the length of this or the height of this triangle right here or similar to this six kilonewton and this height of the six kilonewton so in order to find an expression for w as a uh, related to x we will use a concept called similar triangle or similar similar right triangle so here we drew one triangle the red one represent the large triangle which is this one where the height is six and the base is three and the green one is the triangle at the cut which is at the height of w which was which the expression that we want to find and at a distant at an arbitrary distant x so here we will use we will take the ratio which will be the w over x equal to 6 over 3 so now here we can solve for w 6 over 3 is 2 and x will move to the other side of the equation so that will give you w equal to 2x so now we were able to find the height so again if 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 we want to find the uh, if we want to convert from distributed load to concentrated load we we need to take the area of the distributed load value so in here the area is what one half the base is x times the height w w we were able to find it as 2x so here we we'll, we we replace it with 2x so the 2 will cancel with 2 and we will be left with x squared so great so now we were able to find the an expression for our concentrated load now the question is where are we going to place this concentrated load with respect to zero meter so in here what we will do is uh, uh, as we applied in the previous uh, slide where we find the centroid the horizontal centroid which will be two-thirds from the origin at or from zero meter so right here we will place our concentrated load of x squared and that and remember moment is this is um, is force times the distance to where we're going to take the moment which is at x and the remaining distance which will be x minus two-thirds of x which will give us one-third x so here we will we will add the sum sum we will add we will sum the forces in the y direction equal to zero so x squared will be negative and v will be negative so minus x squared minus v in the x direction equal to zero so the she internal shear force as a function of x will be equal to minus x squared so the minus value tells you what the minus value tells you that you're that our initial assumption that the shear forces will be oriented vertically downward is wrong it will be oriented vertically but up, upward and that uh, expression for the internal shear force is uh, valid only from zero 
all the way to 3 meter. Next, we, we want to find the sum of the moment at the cut x. And remember that uh, our convention uh, counterclockwise is positive. So here I like to draw uh, the center of the triangle at the center of the uh, of x in here. So here remember that moment is force x squared times distance to very perpendicular distance to the central to to the axis of rotation, which is one third x. And the moment here is positive because if if you took this vector force x squared and apply it at the end of this circle or wheel it caused the circle to go counterclockwise which will give you positive moment so here we will write down the force which is x squared times x over 3 plus the moment at x we assume to be positive equal to 0 so now we will solve for uh, the moment at x or internal sum moments uh, as a function of x that will which will give you minus x cube over 3 and this function is valid uh, from 0 to 3 meter only so now after we found the internal shear force as a function of x and the internal net moment as a function of x now we can solve for the uh, shear and, and, and moment diagram. So first thing, let's write down our shear, um, internal shear expression. And the internal shear force at zero is zero. And the internal shear force at uh, three meter will equal to negative nine. So right here at three meter, the internal shear is minus 9 kilonewton. Now, in here we have a 9 kilonewton and external, so, so so that will move from 9 minus 9, 9 steps up, that back to 0. And uh, here the expression is x squared, which is parabolic equation, minus, which means on the negative side. So we're going to have this curved line to be minus x squared. I know it's not perfect one and then the next the next thing we we want to use the internal net moment uh, as a and uh, we will write the expression so at zero it will be equal to zero internal net moment at three the internal net moment will equal to minus nine so here we will write down our minus 9 kilonewton times meter. Now remember, here we, ha that we, here we have an external load, ex sorry, external moment of nine, 9 kilonewton minus, because it's going clockwise, so that means it will run from, from 0 all the way to minus 9. And from so the internal from 0 all the way to 3 will be represented as this function, which will be this curved line in here so this is our internal shear force function which is drawn as this curve and here we have our internal net moment function as a function of x which which is represented as this curve thank you very much